Hey everyone, Admiral Seabass here. Welcome back to the War College. Today's lesson is on declaring war on a major faction. So it's Warsaw Pact turn six in the scenario two game. So this is what we would call turn 6.1. So Warsaw Pact uh, has decided to declare war on NATO. So if you look at 8.14, um, it says, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says a major faction may declare war at any time um, when conditions are met, including during another major faction's turn. Um, when a major faction is at DEFCON 2, it may declare war on another major faction subject to any limits on the national reference sheet. So there are no limits on Warsaw Pact's ability to declare war. Uh, they're already at DEFCON 2. In fact, they start the game at DEFCON 2. So they are now declaring war on NATO. So that's going to have two a lot of consequences. First, that means NATO goes to DEFCON 2. So if we go over here, we take NATO from where they currently are at 26, and we put them all the way up to 44. Um, so they've basically reached their wartime income level now. And since the United States has a defense treaty with NATO... They now go to DEFCON 2, and they go to their full income level. And I want you to look at something before I do this. So see how the U.S. is almost at DEFCON 2 anyway. In fact, they would have gotten to DEFCON 2 on this turn. But they also have a, a, a thing here that um, is 3, and I want to explain what that is. That three here is the U.S. tracking separately any income from land zones that they possess but acquired during DEFCON escalation. So that is Nicaragua, which is worth one, and now Cuba, which is worth two. And why do you track that separately? Well, um, the U.S.'s full wartime income level, 45, is based on the IPP total of their home country land zones. So we don't want them to get higher DEFCON or eventually get to DEFCON 2 based on any new land zones that they acquired. So we have to track that separately. So what you do now is you put them at their full wartime income, and then you know you need to add 3 to it. So you're going to take the 3 off, and then you're going to go 1, 2, 3, and they are now at 48. Okay, so that's the other impact that this has had. And then some other things, since we're doing the Habsburg Tears random event, what that says is that when Warsaw Pact and NATO are at war, then Northern Yugoslavia here aligns to NATO. So I'm going to take that roundel off of Northern Yugoslavia, add a NATO roundel, and then I'm putting that back because Warsaw Pact is going to attack that land zone this turn. And then, uh, Southern Yugoslavia aligns to the Warsaw Pact. So I'll put that there. I can remove these defense treaty markers now, because I need to no longer remind myself about that. Southern Yugoslavia is worth two. Northern Yugoslavia is not worth anything. So, Warsaw Pact will immediately go to 19. And then I'm going to replace these units here with my orange for Warsaw Pact because those are now basically Warsaw Pact units. Um, and so we're just going to swap all of them out just to make it nice and obvious to us that these are Warsaw Pact units now. And Warsaw Pact now uh, can move and attack with these units on this turn as well, which they're going to do. And I just caused a mild disaster there off camera. So, um, there's the air cav, and finally here the fighter. And then I'm gonna show you one more thing too here that's gonna happen, it is out here, we've got a couple of naval units that are Yugoslavian. There's a frigate there, sorry about the glare there on the left. So I'm just going to swap that Yugoslavia roundel out for a Warsaw Pact marker. And then up here, I'm just going to take this sub off. 
Now, actually, no, I'm just going to, that's a diesel electric sub. These are both diesel electric subs. So those are now Warsaw packed. And um, so Warsaw packed in orange is now at war with NATO and the United States. And probably Soviets are probably just now going to go ahead and declare war on NATO and the United States as well. Um, for a lot of reasons. One, just to make it clear that, you know, those subs there are blocking that um, uh, NATO fleet from moving through without a, a screening force. So anyway, that's the lesson on declaring war on a major faction. Hope you guys enjoyed this.